Because when you teach genetic control, you teach victimization. You didn't pick the genes as far as we know. The genes control your traits. You can't change the genes, so uh, you become victimized by your heredity. Uh, and the new science, epigenetic control, reveals how your response to the environment uh, as you change your response to the environment, you change the fate of your cells, just like in the Petri dish. Uh, 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 and that makes you a master because you are the one that has the opportunity to change your perception and response, so therefore you're the one that controls your genes. Hi, everybody. This is Vera Samad, author of Nutrition and Hair Loss, A New Perspective. And today I'm going to be talking about why hair loss is not genetic and how the new science of epigenetics is completely changing our medical paradigm as well as our thinking in regards to most diseases and even hair loss. The old paradigm of thinking was genetic determinism, meaning genes controlled by fate. And thus many people believed that if you had male pattern baldness or hair loss, it was due to a male ancestor of yours, which is utter ludicrous. The new science of epigenetics postulates that our lifestyle choices and environmental factors determine which genes we express. An unhealthy life and environment will trigger genes associated with premature aging, physical degeneration, and disease, whereas a healthy lifestyle and environment will trigger genes associated with longevity, health, vigor, and fertility. So hair is a primary biological indicator of an organism's health and fertility. Basically, excellent health results in splendid hair and poor health results in poor hair. Hair is not a necessity for health. It is a privilege and in a sense, it is a biological crown of the physical world. Nature gives hair to those she deems most fit to survive, reproduce, and perpetuate the species. This idea is not one of my sentiment, but it is made obvious by the very many creatures of the natural world, such as the male lions and their mane, the male peacock and its colorful tails with iridescent feathers, and the beautiful colors of the male mandrill. All of these animals use their colorful garments and hair to signal prowess and superior mating status. The greater the nutritional fortification of the animal, the more exquisite the colors and sheen of their furs, feathers, and manes. In humans, it is no different and the health and vigor of the hair symbolizes biological status, fertility, and rank. It is a sign of superior health which can only be furnished by adhering to natural laws. Now, if you have read my book, you know that I believe hair loss in young men and women is merely a symptom of accelerated aging and physical degeneration due to poor lifestyle choices. The process of hair loss can be entirely halted and reversed provided a person is willing to educate themselves about the natural order of human life and, more importantly, be willing to practice a degree of self-mastery. Essentially, if you have hair loss, you need to master the environmental circumstances which triggered those genes. One or more things about your lifestyle has over-inflamed the body and it is now expressing genetic traits associated with accelerated aging and physical degeneration. You need to ask yourself, are you smoking, doing drugs, taking pharmaceuticals, eating nutritionally devoid food, consuming genetically modified pseudo foods, consuming food allergens, applying cancer causing chemical shampoos to your head? There are many ways in which modern people can inflame and damage the body and in turn spur accelerated aging. If you are familiar with my books and videos, you know that I am a harsh critic of modernity and advocate for a reintegration of human culture with the natural world because it is the natural world and adherence to natural laws that allows us to age gracefully and to live in a sane manner. With many of the people I have worked with, 
I have found that consuming some type of high quality seed oil is usually the easiest remedy to help improve hair loss. Most people's nerves are inflamed and the myelin sheath is damaged due to environmental pollutants, drug use, which includes pharmaceutical drugs, dietary allergens such as gluten and commercial dairy. All of these harm the nerves and the hair is merely an external expression of the nerves. Further, there is a wide spectrum of minerals and vitamins needed to fulfill human requirements for graceful aging and these nutrients are largely missing in modern foods because of modern chemical farming practices as well as the very poor nature of commercial food production. A deficiency in any vitamin or mineral can cause hair loss. For example, iodine is needed for proper thyroid function and energy but a deficiency is notorious for causing hair loss. Zinc is needed for proper hormone production and immunity but a deficiency in zinc will also result in hair loss. Iron is the most important mineral needed for blood oxygenation and proper hemoglobin levels, but it too is notorious for causing hair loss if there is a deficiency. Vitamin B12 is needed for myelin sheath synthesis and energy, and a deficiency of B12 is also notorious for causing hair loss. And the same goes on for almost all other major vitamins and minerals. A poor diet and lifestyle with excessive stimulants, pharmaceutical drugs, and recreational drugs only stress the body more and cause an excretion of water-soluble vitamins and mineral reserves from the body, leaving one depleted and prone to disease and accelerated hair loss. Now, one of the best supplements I advocate for is the use of powdered wheatgrass. Wheatgrass is one of the rare foods which contains almost all of the minerals and elements on the periodic table. The reason for this is not marketing, it's not a marketing gimmick, it's not a new superfood, but it's simple science. The reason for wheatgrass's superb ability to concentrate nutrition is because it has some of the fastest and deepest penetrating roots of any land plant. In just a few days, it is able to tap into the soil and mine more nutrition than most plants can do over a lifetime. The supplementation of wheatgrass in conjunction with the high quality seed oil is an easy way to furnish a more favorable environment for our genes. These foods don't stop hair loss, they simply create a better cellular and biological environment in which different genes associated with longevity and health could be expressed rather than the genes associated with premature aging and physical disease. Now, I will leave you guys with a short clip of Dr. Bruce Lipton and his words on epigenetics. Dr. Lipton is perhaps the foremost authority on the subject and has single-handedly pioneered this new science of epigenetics into the public sphere. Biologist, what did you actually learn then? Well, it was interesting because uh, I became a, um, a biologist, a developmental cellular biologist. I'm working on cells, of course, and uh, in my, my graduate work, I was cloning stem cells. And it's interesting because a lot of people think stem cells are something brand new that just came into this world recently. And the fact was, I was cloning stem cells back in 1967, 40 years ago. And the significance was, while I was doing this research, I was also teaching medical students. So I was teaching medical students the foundation of how cells work, the conventional story out of the textbook, genes control life, what we call the genetic determinism, the belief that genes control your traits, behavior, your physical characteristics, etc. And what my research revealed when I was studying the stem cells was this, very profound. I put one stem cell in a Petri dish all by itself. And it would divide every 10 to 12 hours. So it would be 2, 4, 8, 16 cells, 32 cells. After about two weeks, I have thousands of cells in the Petri dish. But what was unique? They were all genetically identical. But then I did the experiment. The experiment was to take some cells out of the dish and put them into a separate dish with a different environment. Okay. And so the environment is a culture medium. But the culture medium to cells is like the world that we live in. It's got the air, the water, the food, all the things in it. So I take the cells out of my stem cell dish, put them in a separate dish with a, a different environment, and the cells form muscle. 
But then I went back to the same dish with genetically identical cells in it and took some cells out and put them in a different environment, and they formed bone. And then I went back to the same dish with genetically identical cells and put them in a third petri dish with a different environment, and they formed fat cells. And there I was confronted with this reality. All the cells are genetically identical, but they had different fate, fat, muscle, bone. And I said, simple question, what controls the fate of cells? And the answer is the environment. It was the only thing that was different because they were all genetically identical. So I started to really say, oh my goodness, here I am teaching genes control life to the medical students. And yet the cells were revealing to me that, hey, they all had the same genes, but it was the environment that I put them in. And so the environment controlled their life. And a very simple experiment that is very profound for us today is if I took my dish with plastic petri dish with cells in it and moved it from a healthy environment to a less than healthy environment, the cells get sick. And if I were a doctor of cells, I, you might say, well, what kind of drugs would you give these cells? And it turns out, no, you don't give the cells any drugs. You just take the dish from the bad environment, put it back into a good environment, and the cells will innately, naturally come back to health again. So how did this realization impact you at the time? Because you, you were teaching something completely different. Yes. You did this experiment, and you realized what you were teaching wasn't the full truth. Oh, absolutely. And, and then I had a problem with my colleagues because, first of all, they doubted my work, and then I brought them into the experiments, and I had them observe them, watch them, and they all said, well, yeah, the environment controls the cells, uh, but they wanted to marginalize it, so they would say, oh, that's an exception or an anomaly because we're teaching genetic control. It didn't fit the story. Uh -huh. The net result, what it led me to do was I had tenure. I had tenure at the university. I walked out of the university and said, look, I, I can't keep my integrity and at the same time teach something I know was patently wrong. Uh, so I walked out because I saw that teaching the belief that genes control life was very, very incorrect. And uh, it's very interesting because I did that in 1970. Now that's like 30, uh, 40 years ago. And guess what? The new science that is just coming into the forefront of our world today is, is something called epigenetic control. What I was teaching was genetic control, control by genes. The new science, which is now coming around, is called epigenetic control. And what that means, in the, you understand the prefix epi means above. So you say epidermis, that means the layer above the dermis skin. If I say epigenetic control, literally it says control above the genes. And this is the new science. And why is it profound? Because when you teach genetic control, you teach victimization. You didn't pick the genes as far as we know. The genes control your traits. You can't change the genes, so uh, you become victimized by your heredity. Uh, and the new science, epigenetic control, reveals how your response to the environment uh, as you change your response to the environment, you change the fate of your cells, just like in the Petri dish. Uh, uh, and that makes you a master because you are the one that has the opportunity to change your perception and response, so therefore you're the one that controls your genes. Well, that's what we're finding out. Our mind is the government. And when we entertain harmony and, and the right living in balance with nature and with each other, then we provide our 50 trillion cells with very life-supporting information and chemistry. So harmony means giving the body good food? Yes. Not being stressed out? Absolutely. Living in a, in a happy environment? Yes. Uh, it basically, it says, uh, it, it says, I said, when I had my Petri dish of cells, if I put it from a healthy environment to a bad environment, the cells got sick. But you didn't have to give them drugs. Uh, well, all you did is take the, the dish from the bad environment and put it in a good environment. And, and the joke which I like to tell people is, well, this happens in a plastic Petri dish, but guess what? We are skin-covered Petri dishes. Underneath our skin is 50 trillion cells living in a dish, and the culture medium is the blood. My name is Vera Samad. I am a polymath and a regenerative farmer with expertise in many areas. My published works are available on Amazon, in which I share my ideas on health, nutrition, as well as spiritual and physical development. Please subscribe for future videos, like and leave your comments below. Thank you and have a wonderful day.